This is Avenue Trey, and I'm telling everyone out there to please hit that subscribe button for Dusty Vision TV. Yeah, it's Tom Swift representing that D.C., Washington, D.C., telling everybody out there, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit that like button for that Dusty Vision TV. This is Sam Logue from that Mo County, Maryland. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of You are tuned in to Dusty Vision TV. I appreciate everybody out there hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and most importantly, telling a friend about my show. DMV is definitely in the building. And for anybody who is not familiar with that area, DMV is the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area. And on the line, repping the Harlem 30s Crips from the DMV chapter, of course, I have Phantom Loke, Harlem Swift, and Avenue Trey. What up, fellas? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Thank you all for joining the program, man. All right. All right, good. Yeah, yeah, shit. So... Um, yeah, just uh, we're going to go through a few questions, probably last about 45 minutes. And, you know, we can just kind of take turns answering some of the questions. Maybe all you guys can uh, chime in. Um, but shit, let's uh, let, let's take it all the way back. And whoever, you know, wants to wants to answer this, they can go ahead and um, and try to announce your name before just so I can know who I'm talking to. Um, just this first go around. Don't worry about that shit later. Um, but I guess to the best of your knowledge, who were some of the gangs in DMV before Crips and Bloods even made an appearance? This is Harlem Swift. Um, so basically, the first gangs in D.C., you had the D.C. Blacks. D.C. Blacks was the local gang. Then you had your regular neighborhood crews like Northwest, Northeast, that's the shit of uptown D.C. And you go to the south side, that's the gutter side. Southwest, Southeast. Then over the years, what happened is some of us would get locked up. When you get locked up at a D.C. area, if you got five years or over, you're not staying local. You're going to the feds. So they ship us around. So in the process of getting shipped around, people get put on, and then people bring it back to the city. So when they bring it back to the city, that's how it started. That's how it would start to expand. But mostly every neighborhood in the DMV alone always had their own local crews, their own local pinpoint people that they would go to. Now, over the years... Christian blood started to creep in. Now, MS-13 is also out here. We do have Serenios out here. We have some Notanios out here. We do have some Land Kings out here. We do have some GDs. Haven't really seen no vice laws like that. But everybody pretty much do their own thing and stay to their sections. Okay. Now, you guys, when it comes to DMV area, are you guys mostly, the ones I'm talking to on the phone right now, are you guys mostly in the D.C.? area correct, correct okay cool that cool the, the Chris and bloods it took kind of a long time to get out to dc specifically is that correct like you got like season b's didn't really start making an appearance till maybe 2008 or something like that is that true um this is avenue trey i'm about to elaborate on that we've actually you know crips and bloods culture the west coast culture has been out here since as earliest as i want to say 91 and 93 okay you know like and a good a great example of that is if you like, it's actually funny because when I was a kid growing up, I didn't understand, like, when I watched that movie, uh, Meteor Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? Is that yeah. in, that's in D.C., right? Yeah, it was that's shot right. in two locations. It was shot in D.C. and it was shot in Baltimore. That's right. So, and I'm like, wait a minute. And you see some of the people in that movie, you're like, okay, well, I see Tretch is here. He represents for New Jersey. From his neighborhood, I believe they got bloods in Jersey. So that would make sense what nature is from. Then Cypress Hill, from what I'm understanding, is uh, Be Real is blood, right? Yep. I believe so, yeah. And um, they're from they're actually from California, I believe. And I think some of the local guys that was working behind the scenes, I think they had certain Crips and Bloods from local cities like New York, Jersey, uh, Philly, D.C., and Merlin, and Virginia sprinkled in there as uh, some of the casting. Because, you know, people would also ask Robert Townsend, like, why would you come to the smallest city in the world to do a movie about it? Mm-hmm. And he would say stuff like, well, you know, the fit, like you would think that the nation's capital is like the safest city in the world because the president lays his head down the street. Yeah. But if, when you look at 
where the White House is. You walk three blocks down, you in D Street. You on the south side, homie. All right, so we're talking, you said around 90, 91. Um, I guess to the best of your knowledge, let's, um, who, who were some of the first, you know, sets that you guys remember starting to pop up in the DMV area? Well, the, uh, this is Alan Swift. The first sets we had out here, we had a homie from Compton. He was from Kelly Park, Compton Crip. Um, he passed away in his sleep. CIP to the homie Voodoo Loco. Uh, we had a homie, Big Boo. He was from Long Beach and Saint. We had another home uh, that was from Coast Gang. We had a couple of Hoovers out. We got Hoovers from Five Deuce and Five Nine. And 107. And 107s. We also have Doghouse Crips out here. We also have a few Rolling Tonys that came up from Vegas that actually converted over to the Harlem once they got out here. Them guys is really from Vegas. Um, got what, four Trey? We got Four Trey out here. Um, a Trey. We got Playboys. We got the gang, uh, Great Streets out here. That's pretty much like the thing I'm read about now. Mm. It's 6 0. We got a lot of Roller 60 Crips out here. A lot of them guys is out here. Okay. What's the biggest uh, neighborhood out there, would you say? The biggest set? Right, well, right now, the Hollands is. Mm-hmm. It's, between, it's like it's neck and, it's our S Avenue trade. It's, uh, it's, we neck and neck with the four trades in the 30s, and I want to say six O's and eight trades. We're the largest. Okay. Totorella. Totorella. She said she want to see the city bus She don't want to ride the city bus Because she's new to the town I advise, look for truth The ears are lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud Dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up I finally had a kid And the lady bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah most of my life i've been following stars knowing i ain't really had to go that far come to find out it's the truth i already know yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blames instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor, girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to, baby? That's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about, baby, just sit your ass Damn. You wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather, maybe we cut a rug Drinking and driving on the low key, rum in a jug Give me a hug, wrong nigga baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning Won't remember shit, I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Ready, ready, set, go. go. Put your seatbelt on, up in the way we bout to go. We bout the to road go. is gon' get windy, promise not to lose control. Yeah. The final destination's bound to captivate your soul. And so, so, so. many MCs inspired to be yeah. one of the baddest motherfuckers to touch the MIC. Yeah. Then the law came life, now your dreams deferred. All the years of writing rhymes captured it in a blur. My ponders contemplating the worst. Put all your energy into the music, now you're looking for thirst to be quenched. Paying dues upon dues Keep on telling yourself I'm making others believe in you too When it's true You can make it if you try There's levels to everything Better believe it Cause you can deny it And never achieve it It won't come easy Just put in the work And know your worth Continue to rise Cause all we do is capitalize None of these drugs Do what they supposed to Yeah 
And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to? Yeah, most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah This is Avenue Trey, and I'm telling everyone out there to please hit that subscribe button for Dusty Vision TV. Yeah, it's Tom Swift, representing that DC, Washington, DC. Telling everybody out there, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit that like button for that Dusty Vision TV. This is Sam Logue from that Mo County, Maryland. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food Well, to the best of your knowledge, what is uh, the original history of how the Harlem Rolling 30s actually made it to the DMV area? Well, originally, like, you know, it was just like a lot of us were throwing up familiar symbols that belong exclusively to the Harlem 30s. But unfortunately, because we didn't have a, you know, a connection connection with the actual 30s until later, like in the 2000s, when we started, you know, you're going around, you're representing, you're thinking that your shit don't stink, you feel me? And then a couple of these guys that are, you know, tapped in already, they tell you, hey, man, we're really passionate about this. You need to go where they make Crips from, California. So when you actually go over there and you get your, you know what I'm saying, your hands-on experience and education, you start to realize, like, whoa, they're vastly a little bit different than what we originally started out with. So then when you go back to your city, you basically push the reset button on everything that you was taught. Now you're practically laced with everything you need to know. And that's pretty much, and since we all took a vote on what we wanted to do, it was for our best interest to convert over to the, uh, the Harlem 30s and specifically our section. We push the avenues. Now, when you say press the reset button, is it safe for me to say that, you know, before you, you, you guys visited L.A. And, and got put on game that you were following the whole eight ball lions thing? Uh, no, that's the funny thing about us, though. For us, <laughs> we didn't really have the uh, eight ball six point star issue. You know, we knew other sets that did have it, you know. It's just that for us, we had the general knowledge of it, like, you know, what pocket to rag out on and what was the correct, you know, acronyms for some of the, you know, acronyms for Crip and just the general colors. Like, the only thing that we were really missing was, like, what hood history did you have and what was your initial secondary color? Like, if you look at most of the Crip sets, you know, as of 2020, a lot of the Crips and the Bloods collectively started out as multicolored, you know, because they didn't, they had their own like color schemes before they adapted the Crip or the Blood, you know, monikers, respectfully. Okay. Like a uh, prime example is like Harlem's, from what I'm understanding, we were always blue and brown. Like, and, you know, we were throwing up avenues and we didn't really know that at that specific time, like I think I want to say this is what, early 2000s? is when everyone was coming up to us saying, hey, man, I, I know you guys are really going hard for the thumbs, but this is what you are missing, homie. So let me lace you the real. And then when we made a couple of phone calls and tapped in with, you know, the people that's living, born and raised in L.A., we understand that we're West Side Crips originally. And our full name would be West Side Original Harlem Avenue Crips, specifically. But it's still OHC, you know. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, they'll show love to the Dinkers and the Nine Streets and everybody. So, you know, we saw, saw one DNA. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as uh, the other Crip sets that were under the influence of the eight ball, it was highly unfortunate that that came from a lot to do with people getting like really, like the Bloods, for whatever reasons, man, they really had a strong like presence, you know, in jail. And other gangs were like Crips and GDs were kind of like taking a real, you know, beating on the, like the general population. So when they came to click up together for certain sets, that is, that were under the eight ball or whatever they chose to run with, like 
that was what they chose to do. For us, it was more like, hey, look, man, uh, it's only five crips that are pushing the thumbs. Like, we don't really need nothing else. We all we got. So, you feel me? Like, we pretty much never really conformed to the eight ball. We didn't adapt. We Our city chose not to, you know, adapt it. Because it just didn't look familiar. You know what I mean? Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> Shit, how old were each of you when you... I guess got put on. Uh, for me, Harlem Swift actually found me, man. I was like, you know, I was a little, you know what I'm saying? A little, little, little uh, tiny look at the time, you know, it's like 13. Yeah, about the same age. I'm Harlem Swift. I was like 16. Okay. But I uh, stopped putting them on. But uh, when I really got introduced to it, I was about 11 or 12. Okay. So it's so uh, it's pretty much the chop up on what he said. It's so easy for anybody to come out of town and come to a small city and they can say they this or they that. When you really start doing your research on these people, they really know who they say they is. Then, you know, some people get mad when you cut out the middleman and you go straight to the plug. And that's pretty much what we did. Yeah, I've heard that from a couple of my uh, my interviews from Cats from New York where they had this big homie and – you know, for, for years or whatever, he was teaching them this quote-unquote knowledge and then, you know, saying that he's such and such from this L.A. set. And then when they kind of dig deeper and go out there, they're like, wait, who? Who's that? What? And he's teaching exactly. you what? Exactly. Huh. It's like, then it's like you practice it so long, you think that's what it is. And then once you really get the real understanding of it, it's okay, that's not what it is. So if that's where it comes from, okay, we got to hit the reset button. And then uh, this Avenue Trey tapping back in with you. Uh, pretty much, we we seen some we seen some crip sets, unfortunately, that had something that was what the culture would deem as preposterous outside of the six-point star and eight ball. They actually, at one point in time, they had some crips that were answering to a woman as their OG. Oh, wow. Interesting. You know, that was, huh. that was whoa. <laughs> where the hell did they do that at? Huh. And when you go to L.A., no disrespect to the homegirls, but from what I've seen, the homegirls are the support system, and they pretty much, they take orders still from a man, you know, for the most part. I mean, the head, the head of household, Crippen is like a family. The man is the head of the household, so that's who put together the operation. That's who you answer to. It's always been that way. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever heard of <clears throat> on my show, and I've done shit, 50, 60 interviews to where yeah. yes, someone was being run by a by a female. Yeah. 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 And it, it like I said, man, it's bizarre. Like out here on the East Coast, and I'm not discrediting, you know, anybody because, you know, people who have dead homies, people who have people in your wheelchairs and people doing time, life sentences behind the wall. The only problem is these guys just really had some misled information and these guys were, you know, backwards, unfortunately. And like some cities and states, you might see a guy that's like 30 years old talking about he just came home. And you're like, yo, mm. what do you mean you just got put on? Mm. So now take orders from a 16-year-old. This is damn. This is nuts. Huh. Like, and you know, and from what I've learned when I went over to L.A., you know, you see like eight-year-old kids throwing up gang signs at the Metro bus. Like, are you serious? So for them, this is like a way of life. This is a lifestyle. Oh, a colony is coming. But it's from Venus. And if you're still alive, I think you'll see how we differ. And I agree with you about what they call music. Why don't you play some? I'm at a crossroads every damn day Looking back at my past when I sleep But living on the edge now I do it enough Iniquity down to my feet What do I do when I need a little food And I gotta get the money for the rent Fall to my knees, pray to the Lord Come my son, he can give me some money, repent What? What? Thank you I really love you baby so I spank you Life is a way straight fucking you up Living in a prison, I'ma shank you so what's love got to do with it? When it with my heart on my sleeve, I'm a foe. But she said she loved me, she wanted to hug me, and but she starts getting told. And I spy with my little mind's eye, dreams that are beyond what you can see in daylight, baby. Ignore the rain, and everything gonna be okay. And while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline, and I'll be biding my time. 
Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay Yeah What are the chances? You're picking a flight, we're leaving tonight Pack up your bags, we're leaving this place and this baggage Cause what could we do? While Rome is collapsing but not in a day, we'll be okay Let's hit the Amalfia Jackson I'll Pull up the map then Cause I'm through keeping up with these Joneses Don't care what they're posting You know, you only see what they show you Let's fall off the grid then Cause we don't owe nothing to no one Darling, just listen It'll be just like starting over I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that are beyond What you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gonna be okay while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay I don't even know why I'm here Wanna be on a beach somewhere Get kicked up in my chair Smoke all up in the air Clouds are looking lovely My girl is by my side My gun is by my side But why do cameras always make me look so ugly? And the smile fades when they disappear Till it's only you wishing someone cared Hilling out the window, is anybody there? Does anybody care? Was the rope in the fucking chair? And since God wanna play these fucking games I'ma take it there Bang, bang And I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that are beyond what you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gon' be okay while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay let me slide on in like I hit a home run Bottle with a knife, I get the job done Celebrating life, I buy bottles like I wanna Pour some out for the homies, I'm on ya Reminisce, swing in memory Every time I blaze a tree, voices in my head Keep on urging me, tell them about the story Hate the game from the hood All about the paper, many years misunderstood Thinking I could one day make it on the big stage Amazed at what I say, metaphorical wordplay Fucking up your frequency Got you moving and grooving to a kind of time of state Nah, I'm gonna stay high, chilling, embracing the vibe Taking you on a ride, and mission never denied As long as you recognize the eyes in the sky I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that are beyond what you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gon' be okay And while the world burns I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay this is Avenue Trey, and I'm telling everyone out there to please hit that subscribe button for Dusty Vision TV. Yeah, it's Tom Swift, representing that D.C., Washington, D.C., telling everybody out there, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit that like button for that Dusty Vision TV. This is Sam Logue from that Moe County, Maryland. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat uh, Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace When it comes to the DMV area, who runs the prison systems out there? Mm. Shit, that's a, you got it depending on race, you know, yeah. you might have like a I don't know if you ever heard of this thing called Dead Man Incorporated. Yeah, I have actually. White yeah. dudes, right? But they're affiliated yeah. with the uh, the BGS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, yeah, those guys. They they for out Merlin, depending on what it is, like where you're stationed at, that you know could be a problem. Then you got a lot of MS13 that's locked up right now, so they're pretty pretty huge. But for the most part, it's like, you know, it really differs because another, you know, like just for the DMV area, you know, like from what was told by us, like by the OGs, they were saying, hey, look, let the whatever homies that's locked up in Merlin or Virginia, let them know that the minute they hit the module, they can no longer be from D.C., Merlin or Virginia. They got to roll with California. That is the politics. That is the protocol. So let's say if your man is from Saratoga or Montana. Those are two neighborhoods in D.C. 
But your man is saying, oh, yeah, I'm representing the, the D.C. Crips. He can't say he's D.C. Crips no more. He's got to push California. So when he hits the module, when he gets linked up with the blood, the blood, they're going to say to him, too black, too strong. And when they embrace each other, now they understand that they got to come together for the West Coast. So it's no longer about your, your race. Like if you're Hispanic or you're Asian and you want to, you know, get in with them, you might be a token Italian or a white boy that is amongst them. The moment you become the C or the B, your politics is now you're black and you're labeled as a traitor to your race, city, and state. Mm. When they say you've got to keep it West, in California, you, you got to keep it West, man. Mm. Uh, in my research, I was also reading about BGFs having a big uh, influence yeah. out there. Yeah. 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 Can you elaborate on yeah. that? There's a lot of them in um, Baltimore, for sure, man. It's a lot of them, man. Yeah, because we're not that far from we not that far from Baltimore. It's a lot of BGF. It's a lot of BGF in Baltimore. It's a lot of BGF in Richmond. There are some in DC as well. Okay, somebody break break it down for me because I, I keep getting mis you know information or you know I get different answers. But is Baltimore okay. officially no? Is Baltimore officially part of DMV? Yes, you have some. You have some that have tied the gap due to you know certain things that people push together when it comes to it. And uh, like I say, there are a lot of cool guys out in Baltimore. I even have homies that's all out there in Baltimore that I could call up at any given time. And they let me know what's going on. The same thing, if they call me, I let them know what's going on my end. And that's how we keep it going. Baltimore is only 40 minutes from D.C. Baltimore will consider themselves Baltimore, but they still part of Maryland. It's a 40-minute drive. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, shit, uh, we've mentioned MS-13 a uh, few times yeah. tonight, and I'm in L.A., so that, that's one that I'm specifically interested in talking about a little bit. Uh, I guess specifically, when do you guys remember, you know, start seeing a Mexican gang presence, you know, with the 18th Street and the MS-13s and all that? Correct. There's, a, there's 18 streets out here. There's MS-13. There's MS-13, I'm going to say they came in. I'm going to say 98. But when they really got heavy was in 2000. Cause they actually had a uh, Salvadorian that came out here and hit and restarted them over again, and that's when they really started pushing heavy. And they areas they really are are consistent of in Maryland, which is like Laney Park, we in Maryland, PG County, Riverdale, Landover, two five, New Carrollton, or deep in Virginia, Alexandria. Richmond, that's where you can find all of them at. In D.C., mostly it's going to be in the northwest area, up, which we consider uptown D.C., which is Columbia Heights. Okay. But Columbia, Columbia Heights is like the battlefield. You go over there, you got to like really be on point. That because you don't see them, that don't mean they're not there. That's pretty much how, how, people, how we operate out here. Gotcha. When, um, I guess, what's the relationship like in general between the black gangs and, and the Mexican gangs? Oh, this uh, Avenue Trey. Uh, pretty much because it's like, for the most part, blacks and Latinos, we don't really, like, we can feud, but if, if we do feud, it's over, like, you know, the general disrespecting, you know what I mean? But for the most part, like, blacks and Latinos get along, you know? We we actually got some individual local crews that are a Latino gang. And, you know, these guys are, you know, for D.C., like especially like the area you mentioned, Columbia Heights, they got a couple of 18th streets out there. And when they knew that we're from the 30s, they just embraced us. Like, we're cool. Um, anything else like uh, 15th Street or like, uh, you know, uh, a master crew, like, these guys are cool. Like, they don't have any problems with blacks, you know? Mm. But the MS-13 is kind of like, when they got here, like, real heavy, when their presence was being known, and when they made Gangland, you know, it was like, they were real live, like, causing, like, real havoc for a lot of people that they didn't care if you were black. They just wanted to, you know, do what they got to do just to, you know, make their name menacing. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, it's funny that you said that because I remember a big story. It's probably years ago, probably even a decade ago, even probably more than that. But there was a big story that was attached to Virginia and the MS-13s and a some chick being found dead and all that. I, I remember like early reading, I'm like, damn, they have MS-13s in Virginia? And it just tripped me out back then. Yeah, man. It was like, you know, like people were like a lot of, from what I'm understanding, you know, with some friends that are El Salvadorian descent, a lot of them moved from where they're from, like El Salvador, just because they want to get away from MS-13. Mm -hmm. And they don't want their families to be, you know, raptured up into something that they don't really want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So they move to America, like D.C. They think that, you know, hey, it's clear over here, you know, so I get to have a house, I get, to get a job that I always wanted, and I raise my family gang life free, you feel me? But then when you start seeing Mara Salucha like following now all of a sudden they're targeting their children to like ghost them into joining them this is a uh, phantom loke uh yeah and it's it's like um it also depends on the individual as well like you can have someone that's from a black gang come across someone that's from a hispanic gang but it depends on energy and it's about mutual respect like if one respects the other as a man before the gang culture comes into play then it's respect all in all but especially with the ms um when they came there was also a targeting uh hispanic kids to join them and if they didn't join they would kill them like there's been some instances in fact um even around the wheaton area um they were trying to recruit kids and there's one kid uh he didn't want to be a part of it and um Sadly, he met with a terrible fate. Um, and that's just how they are. Like, it's either with them, it's like you either get down or lay down. And they're just a really uh, menacing presence, but that's always been their uh, stock and trade. That's, that's just always been how they were. It's just you and me. School is in session, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go uh -huh. to recess, but I take, take that, that away. away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200000 I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. On. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug. They trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy. Replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up and now we two steps beyond these lames. Kicking up dust. Never running from the smoke. Hold up. We really want the smoke only from Clone God though. Let's go. One plus one equals two. I'm talking Talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a Gemini, bitch, so you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars. So pardon if I snap, girl, I'm sorry. Bitch, pass me the lighter. I'm about to play Street Fighter. Hot dug in that pussy. Like my name, Ken Ryu. She says she never kissed a girl. Well, bitch, tonight you experiment. Put this tablet on your your tongue and just enjoy the experience. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. This is Avenue Trey, and I'm telling everyone out there to please hit that subscribe button for Dusty Vision TV. Yeah, it's Holland Swift, representing that D.C., Washington, D.C., telling everybody out there, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit that like button for that Dusty Vision TV. This is Sam Logue from Mo County, Maryland. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. You guys familiar with the King Von Quando Rondo situation?
Okay, yeah, yeah, man. Highly yeah. unfortunate, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. Another young dude, man. Very talented. In my opinion, he was next. He, he, he had it. You know, he had the look. He had the flow. And he was really doing his thing. And for anybody who doesn't know, he was killed outside of a, um, a, a smoke shop. Or not a smoke shop, but a hookah bar. You know, just got into it with, with Quando Rondo. And within three seconds, uh, someone ran up and shot him. Um, my question for you is, and I would love to kind of hear all of your, your answers on this. Uh, the guy who shot King Von's name is Lil Timmy. Um, now, in your opinion... You know, of course, we don't want to lose anybody. It sucks when you're losing somebody. But when you're in that situation, did you did little Timmy do the right thing? Uh, this is um, Avenue Trey. Um, I feel as though, like, if you, you know, you seen, you know, your man, you know, getting, you know, like I, I, I wasn't there, obviously. But, like, if you seen your man's in trouble, you know, the first reaction is, hey, look, the minute I see more than one person, Guys out there try to rush him. Yeah, you know? apparently there was like thirty dudes. He turned around and saw like thirty guys. Well, yeah, I mean, he he did what he he did what he was supposed to do. You know, you're in survival mode. They those guys just wanted to make it home, man. They just and you know, given the reputation of the streets nowadays, you know, they ain't fighting no more, bro. They they shooting. Yeah, off top. And, you know, and it's highly unfortunate because you know, hip hop was created for brothers to, you know, leave the hood, but also to take the hood along with them as far as the route as, you know, like generational wealth. Like, you know, it's a lucrative black business for all of us, you know, to make money. Like, hey, look, my style is different from your style, but you can do your thing and I can do my thing and we can just, you know, we can make money doing what we love to do, music. Or we can collaborate together and show the communities from different neighborhoods that, it's a positive and we can really make something out of this, you know? And, uh, one of the things I wanted to say, uh, like Nipsey hustle, rest in peace yeah. because he was showing us generational wealth by, yes. you know, taking, buying up your community, like mm -hmm. turn it into a clothing store, you know, like, Hey man, since he this did what everybody talks about, but never does. He did it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like he took it there. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that if the marathon truly does continue, you know, we need to do our part to contribute to the race because, you know, it's not just about, you know, my set and your set no more. This is about survival, you know? Mm. So, and hip hop gave us opportunities to, you know, hey, used to be a time where all we could do is, you know, beatbox, you know what I'm saying? And a rap a cappella to a freestyle. But now we have money where, like, hey, you can pay this dude money for a beat. Get your promotional team together and let's shoot a rap video and let's bring out the whole community. Make everybody, you know, look like champions out there on the camera, man. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure everybody that, you know, everybody that can't rap, you know, there's a job for you. You want to be the cameraman? I'd rather put I'd rather put something positive in your hand before I put a weapon in your hand. You know what I mean? Amen to that, homeboy. Amen to that, dog. Speaking of Nipsey Hustle, let's kind of keep it on that. Um, unless anybody else wanted to chime in on that. Uh, this is Phantom Low. Yeah, it was a really unfortunate incident that happened with King Von. Um, because, like, now, like, you see this thing going on, and then you see, like, some of the young, like, a lot of people feel really upset about this situation, but at the same time, you have individuals, other individuals that are hyped up about it and think that's the way to go. There was a time back in the day, you know, it was a code, like, you know, win or lose, throw them hands and like over the years people just um started using guns because um peer pressure and people just like making fun of them saying that they just lost or whatever and then they feel that that feeling inside and then they go for a gun and nowadays it's like the very first reaction on site yeah. and you have like all these um you know saying innocent uh bystanders around like you just have like people just getting laid out over confrontations and situations that doesn't even involve them whereas back in the day you didn't have too much of that because people were really throwing the hands mm -hmm. so to see that situation it just goes to show how much um things have really changed over years and especially like now with the nifty hustle thing that's even a more uh very touchy subject because he he got killed by someone that was 
literally like right next to him yeah. in his pictures. Probably used to bring him over to the, the house, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, food um, in his stomach and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like he really fed this dude. And then he just snaked him like that <laughs> over something that he caused himself. Because like it's a rule in the streets, like you cannot snitch. And if you're no, if you're being called as a snitch, like there's obviously a reason for it. And if there's paperwork behind it, then you're a snitch. Like there ain't no way around it. And then he just like just took it out on Nip because Nip called him out on it in public. But it just goes to show you that like it don't matter if you grew up with each other, or whatever, whatever, whenever shit hits the fan, niggas will snake you. And that's just a very sad, unfortunate thing. It could be someone that's in your own set or somebody that you grew up with since sandbox days. You know, once you put them on, the, you put them on the spot, let them know what you did wrong. Some people can't take, accept the, the truth. And then they just get rid of you. And that's just a really unfortunate thing that happened to Cuz, CIP, Neighborhood Nip. Yeah, what a horrible situation, man. Um, speaking of fucked up situations, this kind of ruined my day. You know, this recently happened. Um, someone vandalized his store. I don't know if you guys heard that all the way out there. But, oh, oh um, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. See, now that, no, that's really disrespectful. Like, you see, you, the man is dead, and then you vandalize his store. That just goes to show you that, like, you know what I'm saying? You have people out there that are just, that just have a lot of hate in their heart and are just very, that full of griminess in their heart and so to where you'll vandalize the man's store. But not only that, you vandalize the store when the man is dead mm -hmm. in the most tragic way you can ever think of. That just goes to show you that, you know what I'm saying? You have niggas out here. You have people out here that are with you just for the ride. And then once you're gone, they just want to take everything that, um, you know what I'm saying? That you built up. Like even with the King Vaughn situation, they said, Oh, there was video tapes that, um, niggas like, uh, some of his stuff and all that. That's some grimy, that's some shady, grimy shit. Like, that, like, where do they do that at? Yeah, taking his He's supposed to be your autopsy. men. Yeah. They supposed to be your men. They supposed to be your crew. They supposed to be ride or die, you know what I'm saying, um, in this for life and all that brotherhood. But brotherhood is not about making one of your own and doing him dirty and leading him to death and then taking all that he built up and King Vaughn even fed his own hood. You know what I'm saying? He fed his whole block. Mm -hmm. Came back, gave his uh, close men a stack or so, and then niggas just turn around and do that shit. That's just really, all, that's just like the ultimate slap in the face and disrespect. Yeah. As the time goes by and the earth rotates We gon' fly high up to outer space And we would never fall down I'm one with the universe, call me the sound The bass booming in your speaker With the microphone I possess, it's a heater You better drop it, let go You can't touch my beats or my flow Nigga, Kevin Smith my name But not the director, we ain't the same, man I'm a pimp by nature Inside of me is a god, the creator Pursuing my dreams, cause anything is possible, you know what I mean I wanna live comfortable, but gotta be clean But working every day from 9 to 5 in my thing. I feel like a trap, can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time, overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped, can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time, overload, I'm in trouble one by one we start to subtract them Separate facade from who really bought that action Feel like I'm trapped In the room without a key Four walls surrounding me Stripping my identity Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive Take away my culture and my nationality Talking about double jeopardy and yeah. Double standard to killing my folks Like it don't even matter And when we gather Disgusted by the charades Bullets spray the crowd Target practice in the game No accountability so who bears the blame They wanna see us violent and justify the change Back to how it used to be Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel as heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For awareness I feel like a trap Can't get out of the bubble 
I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot Who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this And hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified And made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it Have a purpose When he smiles They don't really know What's under the surface I'm a product of pain Racism and cocaine I never tooted once But it's all in my veins That shit is all in my genes See, it's my destiny This is nothing new kid I'm just an old recipe A boring story That you've heard hundreds of times Blah 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 Wham 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 Hate my life And my parents both suck I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, our dumb asses ain't I missing. feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble This is Avenue Trey, and I'm telling everyone out there to please hit that subscribe button for Dusty Vision TV. Yeah, it's Tom Swift, representing that D.C., Washington, D.C., telling everybody out there, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit that like button for that Dusty Vision TV. This is Sam Logue from that Mo County, Maryland. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Yeah, man, it's like, seems like this year we've lost so many rappers um, The first one, it was earlier on this year before COVID hit uh, He was supposed to be the next big thing uh, New York rapper, Crip rapper, Pop Smoke VIP uh, uh, Pop yeah, yeah, he was he was it, man. He once again he had the look, he had the flow, he had the style, he had everything. Um, and for lack of better words, he just got caught slipping out here in L.A. He was in a five million dollar home, partying it up, and somehow the address gets online, and you know someone comes and takes his life. But my question for you all is, um, you know, since you do dabble in music, uh, how do you think rappers with gang ties should move when they're traveling state to state? Yeah, it's all a slip. See, I believe when you're traveling in state to state, city to city, you know, all, all, always show respect. You know what I'm saying? Show respect where you're going. So, you know, always give a courtesy. If you got somebody that you could call in that city, I advise you to call in that city because if it, this is a thing you going there to visit and actually living there. So you might think what you do in your city is okay. It might not be okay in that city. So always try to curl yourself, like, part of the way still, you know what I mean? Be yourself. I'm not saying you got to change up, switch up your whole the lingo, lingo, the way you are. Be yourself, but don't do the extra stuff that you know, the do's and the don'ts, the yes and the no's. Never talk. Right. So when you're in another city, that other city, to them, that might be disrespect. And vice versa. But because it's okay in your city, you think it's cool. So so that's the thing I want to say about checking in. A lot of people think checking in means, oh, yeah, you suck right now. You're doing this and that. No, that doesn't mean you tapping in with somebody and you letting somebody know that you're okay. It's just like me when I travel, I go to different cities for, for my set. Let's say I go to North Carolina. I go to New York. It is not necessary. They're going to always pull up. I'm just tapping in with them to let them know, yeah, I'm here. I'm okay. I'm all right. That's it. Anyone else want to chime in on that? This, yeah, this is uh, Avenue Trey. You know, I'm just saying, man, like, you know, wherever you go, man, when you out of town and you pulling up on family, family's only one phone call away, man. Let somebody know, you know, you know, that you in the building. At least link with who you need to link with. You know what I'm saying? And, Whatever you do, if you are a music artist, one of the things that we got to always, for the culture, we got to stop with social media, man. No one needs to know Speak that you it. a sandwich on McDonald's. 
on speak on that shit, man. West Boulevard. Like, I'm, like, bro. Yeah, I'm no like, gang with, member, but if I'm hanging out with you, don't fucking put my location. Don't put where we are, man. I don't want somebody popping up that I had a random beef with 11 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm sitting down, like you know, like just reading on the article with the, what happened to Big Payback from 818 the mm-hmm. valley mm-hmm. like he was killed in a mcdonald's man so when i seen something like that i'm like then i look at these youngsters that are like running around on social media you know saying we in the building and you got your location stamped man, i'm like isn't that crazy, do you dog? realize that, huh? that's crazy it's, it's like crazy. why do i want to know if i got all of this stuff that i've been talking on wax right then i'm coming to your tour it's like this the fact that you're a music artist Believe it or not, you actually somewhat relinquish your ability to maneuver in the streets because you lose the presence of being invisible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when you were a nobody, you know what I mean? Like, nobody cared about you popping up in New York, Philly, or L.A., or Texas. But now that you're, like, a big name, like, you know, Rowdy Rich, you got to, you got to, you like, hey, look, if we're, if, uh, there's just nothing against the brother, you know, much love to the cuz. Positive. You gotta move, you know what I'm saying? You gotta move positively out here. Like, so when you pulling up, you don't want to be like, okay, we going to go up at Fat Burger, you know what I'm saying, and get something to eat. By the way, I'm, you know, my location's on IG. Like, come get me, like dog. Like, I don't, I don't want nobody to know, know. where I'm going to go eat. You know what I'm saying? Why does, why do we need to know stuff like this? You know, we, the culture. We, if you moving like you from the street. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep it like that. And if you got other people that you let know in the building, shoot, man, put them on the payroll and hire them as, like, your security personnel. Get them all the way legit. You know what I'm saying? So now, like, you know, they get paid to protect you. And it's not looked at like it's extortion because you having your squad on the payroll and they making money. And they got to protect the money. You're the artist. Mm -hmm. You're the gateway to get out of the hood and poverty. So you're taking these men and these women with you, you know, you're taking them to the wealth. So they got to protect you like as if you were the president. You know what I'm saying? Even with, you know, the unfortunate person that's in the White House right now, he's not stupid enough to, you know, leave out, you know what I mean, without security. Mm-hmm. He got the whole Secret Service on deck for him, even though they probably don't like him. Mm, yeah. They still have to jump, jump in front of a bullet for his ass. Yeah. You know, I don't fuck with orange, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, man. Uh, let's move on a little bit. I want to keep it on the same kind of topic. Uh, FBG Duck was uh, another one that had everything, um, and, and he was my favorite drill rapper personally. I'm an old-ass head, but I knew about FBG Duck. But um, he was killed, for everybody out there who doesn't know, he was killed, you know, in a nice part of Chicago, you know, just doing his thing, shopping, what would be comparable to a Rodale Drive or a, or a Saks Fifth Avenue or something like that. He was in that area. Um, got caught lacking, for, be- for lack of better words. But my question for you all is, I'm sure you're familiar with the whole, uh, you know, smoking on such and such pack, dissing the dead homies, when, when, when the Chicago rappers who were... They're they're smoking on Tuca. They're you know smoking on such and such. And what that means for everyone out there is they're they're dissing. They're basically saying they're smoking their dead homie, mm-hmm. the enemy. Um, what are your thoughts? You know, being hip hop head specifically, but what are your um, what are your thoughts on that whole aspect of of hip hop? This is fandom low. In my opinion, that's all just for clout. It's also like you know what I'm saying. You're just making the situation worse on yourself. Cause like you know what I'm saying like you remember like back like in L A they be like fuck your damn homies but now you saying smoking on the pack and all it takes a whole different like type of level of dis- disrespect and like for example I'll I'll even bring this up uh, if you saw the recent versus battle with Gucci and um yeah I did when he oh, he, yeah when he went off on that uh <laughs> killing his homie that, yeah that whole situation like people were bring up that that time when um gucci uh apparently did what he did had to do but the thing is that you can't um you can't be disrespecting people like that especially on live it goes back with the whole tuka pack thing like you're just making the situation work and like i just be like believe like people really do that for clout 
to, and they just don't understand the, really the meaning of it. Like you hear all these rappers nowadays, even like back when the drill scene in Chicago was uh, on a cracking, uh, everybody wanted to sound like they was from Chicago. But I guarantee you, if you take those same individuals and take them out of Chicago, they would not survive not even a day um, pulling that shit off. They might know the lingo and all that, but if they were actually out there talking all that, they would not survive not one day, not, not, not even a full day. You know, you might have to look, but can you actually go all the way with them? Mm. Oh, this is uh, Avenue Trey. I'd just like to, you know, elaborate a little bit more. That's just like, um, I don't know if anybody remembers Little JoJo. Of course. Back, yeah, back during the Chief Keith. But it's like, dog, you on your phone. You're letting them know you're in your neighborhood, disrespecting mm-hmm. dead homies. And Explain what happened to Little JoJo real quick for anybody who doesn't know. I know the story, but. I mean, from from what I've gathered and what I've seen with the story, Little JoJo and Chief Keith, you know, I believe it was like somebody had a record out and they were disrespecting their homies. On BDK you know? or GDK or some shit like that. I get them yeah, all confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like a gang just made the radio and got radio play yeah. for shit on you and your dead homies like that's disrespectful so then when he decides to fire and retaliate back with the you know it gained momentum you know what i'm saying but at the same time it's like when you decide to go in this person's neighborhood you know and tweet i'm in the neighborhood for the whole world to see basically saying i ain't scared of you and your people's just pulling up like back and forth taunting chief keep saying better watch your back and stuff like that I'm like, bro, the next time you roll around there, you know, you already got a soundtrack that you've already put out in the universe, letting them know how you feel and what you're going to do when you see them. So it's almost like you're alerting them that you're on your way. Like that right there, man, he didn't. Little Jojo is just one of many that mm-hmm. suffered like a fate like that, man. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and people think before you go. People may think we're talking about dudes in their 30s, 40s. No, Lil JoJo was like 14, dog, 15, something like that. 14. Yeah, he like he about 14. He, he yeah. like, he, and all these like guys, young, are, yeah, Tuka, young, they're all they're all 14, 13, 14 years old, and, and they have streets dedicated to them. It kind of reminds me of that other kid from Chicago. Uh, his name is Yummy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yummy. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, hearing about that, and uh, I think there was a Tupac record that Tupac had called Young Niggas. Oh, yeah, he yeah, he like, did. Yeah, and he was dedicating this for all the youngsters that are in a rush to be gangsters. Learn to live your life before you end your life. It's like the message has been lost How much money does a black life cost? Every time we kill another brother We keeping people employed who profit when we kill another How can we make a change? Instead of pointing at others for the blame Shit, let's put some gasoline on the flame And burn this bitch down if they don't hear what we saying Better be strapped for the peace They talking about defunding police Gun stores sold out for six weeks I'm smelling something in the air And it reeks Black lives matter all the time Not just when one of them kills one of our kind Cause I don't ever see Al Sharpton speaking When Chicago has 30 murders in one week Tell me what we gonna do this ain't the way Cause they ready to let loose How many ever we gonna do Come on. Hey. Hey. Pay attention, maybe slow down and just listen It's my state of mind, I'm dreaming, I'm on a mission Trying to push the world for peace, no more hate I got my black fist up in the corner to demonstrate Let's get it straight this time Movement is all over the world, energy divine Where were you when the revolution got started? Black people fed up, more than dearly departed We all living on this earth, we human, nobody rallied Marching in units in George Floyd, chanting loudly 
How many brothers have to die? We already realize equality's alive. I'm trying to get it by enemies that be necessary. Red and blue lights flashing behind me can't be very scary. I see the police before they see me. Get out the car, roll the ground down on your knees. Please. The pigmentation of my skin, this current situation Got me feeling like the revolution's about to begin On the different type of vibes, so many ready for change Fist in the atmosphere, sick and tired of the games Being played by these slain, ain't no fucks given Only justification does I fit the description Trapped in the system, just another digit In a private prison, trying to keep the optimism It's tearing me to the core, how many more we gon' lose? We got the right to live a life without you and me Know what we do, enlighten the youth Feed the knowledge, give them tools Running the race, coming out of my shoe Taking it all the way back to my it's a different time, we ain't going forward You see there's power in numbers, keep on ignoring You see us coming together, together we growing They feel the change that's coming, you better know I'm in here, I'm in here, 31 You angry at 16 How many have we gonna lose? Avenue Trey, and I'm telling everyone out there to please hit that subscribe button for Dusty Vision TV. Yeah, it's Tom Swift representing that DC, Washington DC. Telling everybody out there hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit that like button for that Dusty Vision TV. This is Sam Logue from that Mo County, Maryland. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. I would love to know any of your thoughts, you know, on the whole Takashi 6ix9ine situation in hindsight now that it's behind us. I mean, the young man is. Unfortunately, you know, he put himself in a trick bag, bro. And them wolves looked at him like, okay, you want to be a blood? All right, we'll let you, we'll let you do it, you know, but you're going to pay us money, though. And when the money stopped and he started seeing things, they, he didn't realize that he was being used and pimped from the gate. Because that's all he was. He was, he was somebody's host. He got pimped. Then when he realized that he was getting pimped, he tried to cut it off. And shit, he sang like a fucking canary. Like, homie, when you take, when you are in the street, understand something, homie. You getting involved with your, these are your, these are your bloods, right? This is your brethren. You know what I'm saying? You ain't supposed to let nothing happen to them. You are, have been out here actively participating in gangbanging activity. And then you're going on social media, taunting different people. <laughs> no, 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 this is serious. You're taunting people and do you realize that you're going to be the guy that, hey, look, man, you, we can look at you and tell you are not what the street niggas look like. Like a rainbow-haired, like, Mexican? Come on, dog. Like, you did that even wet, worth the wet food stamp. Like, nobody should support your records. And you know what? Another thing is, like, he's the king of the clout chase. And you know what I'm saying? He's also the king face of the textbook definition of rap. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying? He's a grade-A master splinter. He's not going to get no respect. And I don't feel sorry for him. But what I am a little bit hurt by is I don't like how all the real niggas like used like like no, used like was. like used him knowing that they knew that he can't keep those secrets. He's he can't hold his own water. Know, they knew that. And I don't feel sorry for them either, man. I don't. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause my whole thing is tripping ain't for sale. 
Blooding is not for sale. I'm going to say that again. The C and the B are not for sale. Mm. You cannot put this on and say, let me give you $100,000 and I want to be a, I want to be a BG. No, homie. You got to turn around and go fuck with, go fuck with somebody else like that does that. But coming up over here, Jack, we're going to look at you like we're taking your chain. Now, we're not going to wear your chain. We probably just, you know what I'm saying? We just sell that motherfucker. We ain't about to walk around looking like a target. I want, and then, and like that, that's just, no, man. Mm. They, they knew better. Uh, for the bloods that are behind the wall because of him, you knew better. You knew better. I do not, you do not get no tears from me, bro. You knew. You know what I'm saying? This ain't like, you know, it would it, be different if you got the homie that is one of y'all and he actually, you know, is a day one, he's an A1 from day one, and he's been there and you, y'all you supported him. Like like Pop Smoke. You know what I'm saying? We, we feel in Pop Smoke. Like Nipsey Hussle. Notice how Nipsey Hussle kept the same people from start to finish around him. Up until his death, untimely death, unfortunate. All of those are real ones. What really hurts me is all the real niggas is dying, and this rat nigga just slipped through the fucking cracks. Like I'm really mm-hmm. like, come on, man. FBG Duck, Mo3, Pop Smoke, Nipsey Hustle, yeah. uh, King Vaughn. Like, come on, man. And then I think what was it? Uh, another rapper by the name of what was it? Triple uh, Beams, Little Dante. Oh yeah, Lil Yari out here, and uh, he's from San Francisco, man. Yo, Lil Yasi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry if I butchered the brother's name. You know, it's just like to me. I'm just like it. It's like, dog. How is he still alive? Mm. Let just, alone throwing money in a club. Still, he was literally just last Saturday in a fucking club throwing money at Javante Davis. I, I, I'm still wondering why do they even like? Mm. I, I don't even know why they even allow this man to even go anywhere. Like. He parties with the feds, bro. Like, he's a whole confidentiality informant. Mm. And to be honest yeah, with yeah. you, for the brothers that's listening, I don't, I'm not saying don't rob this man, but just, I don't know if anybody remembers seeing that movie Fast Furious 8 when he took his chain off and there was a microphone and revealing a location. Mm. This, he might be on some federal agent type shit like that. Yeah. Like, you might rob the cocktail <laughs> and you find out his chain. Is a fucking homing beacon for the feds, and you like surround it. So I don't know what to do with this guy. Yeah. You might need something for the scope to get him up out of here. Chip, yeah, chip in the skin, <laughs> chip in the skin, or something. Shit, you never know, man. Yeah. Shit. Hey, this is Phantom Loke. I'm, I'm gonna put in my input of this also. For the niggas that he was with, like like my homie said, they knew Barry because they brought him in so close into their operation to where he was able to observe and basically tell the feds every single detail of what's going on in their operation. And you just don't do that with niggas that you just, like, you know what I'm saying, you just bring to the table. And this nigga was not even with that type of shit. All he was was just a hype nigga, a mascot. You know what I'm saying? And But also, like, people... I hear people saying they understand why he did it and all that because the whole situation with his baby moms and, like, all this other stuff. But here's the thing, though. When you become part of this element, when you become Crip, Blood, GD, whatever, you knew exactly what you signed up for. You knew exactly what you signed up for. And the number one rule in the gang world or in the street world, neutral world, whatever, is to not snitch that that that's in any organization that's in niggas out here that's just new like just on their own trapping just being independent and all that stuff but the number one rule everybody knows is to not snitch and the fact that he is still out here and all these real niggas is dying and like you even got real niggas going getting indicted like look what if you know um this is this is just brand new Look what's happening to Casanova. Oh, yeah. Like, like that, that's that's a bombshell right there. Yeah, man. He, niggas like that is Angie going to Herbo. jail and then he's killed. But you got this snitch-ass nigga. Like, you guys, not, like, these niggas got these guns waving in their music videos, talking about, oh, all this rah-rah shit. But when there's a snitch in, their, in your city, y'all, y'all just turn him away and shit and not give him the ass over that he deserves. But when it comes to a real dude, 
Y'all are quick to roll up on him and end his life. Mm. Niggas got the game backwards, way back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. it, it's just really sickening. Like, it's like there's no code anymore. And, like, I'm a strong moral believer in in, in the code and shit. You know what I'm saying? Only the true ones can relate to this. Like, the code, like, no snitching. You know what I'm saying? You don't, like mess with another man's family and all that. Like, I'm a strong believer in that. But yeah. the way these niggas are nowadays is just so fucked up. Like, I don't know what the hell happened over the years and the decades. Like, niggas just gotten so fucked up to the point they don't even know themselves. And I just feel like if they have never really experienced this type of shit as they're young and now all of a sudden they want to come outside, just stay inside. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Like, you're going to end up in a whole bunch of shit or you're going to cause a whole bunch of shit that's going to come out really up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like niggas just need to get their shit um, straight before they hop off that porch. They need to understand this shit is not a game. No paycheck. No pay, no payment, <laughs> no paycheck, no favors. It's going to, you know what I'm saying? No health insurance, you know what I'm saying? Like none of that shit. Like niggas really need to get um their, their minds together. Uh, on that just, yeah. on that note, yeah. how how um how big is Bobby Schmurder gonna be when he comes home? Oh, they're gonna celebrate him, man. Yeah. No, the, the true one. The true one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Salute to the cuz, you know. And he did uh, for anybody who doesn't know, he did a couple of extra years just so his boy and him could get out at you know, around the same time. He was gonna get five, I think his boy was gonna get nine, but he said, Let me take those other two. And so we can get her out around the same time. See, now it's really rare to come across anybody that would actually do that. The loop. You know what I'm saying? You can't do nothing but respect a man like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. You, there's nothing much you can do except to respect him. Even as an you outsider can, myself, you a civilian. His, you, you can even be his worst enemy. For a man to do something like that for you, you have no choice but to respect him. Because there's a whole lot. It, it's like 99% would not even take, not even the minimum for you. They'll, they'll, they'll rat on you before they take they take um your year. They won't even pay you any mind. They'll be like, who are you? Forget all about you. Leave you in there. You know what I'm saying? They all good. While you in, in the prison and all that stuff, and if you got your girl and all that, you know what I'm saying? She got to pay for that or she'll probably move on. You know what I'm saying? Shit, gentlemen, uh, it's been a pleasure. I want to give each and every one of you a chance to give out your Instagram, give out your sound, whatever you want to promote. The floor is yours. So go ahead and uh, just, you know, one at a time, do your thing. So uh, this is for uh, Avenue Trey. I got a clothing line, you know, it's called uh, Avenue that. Originals. Oh, is that the one that you, this, that uh, homeboy sent me a picture of with the Avenue in the 30s? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. pretty dope. I won't wear that shit, but that shit's dope as fuck. <laughs> 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 if you have something non-gang affiliated, homie, I will support you. But hey, give give your shit out, man, because there may be someone out there who does. I mean, it's the thing, though, man. Like what I, it's like I'm working on a neutral logo for that. You know what I'm saying? As long as I take that stamp off, man. And I just, <laughs> it's plain. I think. I think when you you walk outside with it in plain, I think without the stamp on it, I think you're good. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because you know, I, my philosophy is, you know. Whether you're the guy that works at the bank, whether you're the guy putting money in the bank, or you're the guy robbing the bank, regardless of the angle, what makes all of y'all original is the avenue that you chose to live your life. I like that, homeboy. Thank you, cuz. Appreciate That's it. Dope. Salute. Get, do you have a website, or do you want to give out your um, your Instagram or anything? Oh, my Instagram is uh, 3100 uh, underscore avenues underscore originals show who's next up uh, this uh swift i was gonna say uh thank you um check out my youtube channel all right uh short commercials i do a little bit of co uh comedy work and oh no shit what is it uh it's gonna be master swift 3100 spell it real quick so i'm, I'm gonna pull it up right now m-a-s-t-e-r-s-w-i-f 3100 perfect cool cool all right yeah go for it keep going yeah, and I produce, I, I produce my own beats and I do my own music. Nice, dog. Master Swift official radio. I see it right here. I'm about to hit that subscribe button yeah. now. Bam.
Yeah. I encourage everyone else out there to do that. Hell yeah. Who else? What we got? I ain't got this is kind of low. I ain't got a you know what I'm saying like anything to promote, but if it's okay with you, I have a message. A, a brief message. Please so, do. Please. And and before you get into your message, I want to thank you for even putting this whole thing together. It's been a pleasure. Now the floor hey, is yours, homeboy. All you young is out there. Before you make any decision in your life, know that everything has a consequence to it. You might be around, you know what I'm saying, your peers, you know what I'm saying, doing all this stuff, but you don't know what's happening behind closed doors. And you might be accidentally dragged into something that you have no control over, and then that'll be the end of your life. Whether you're behind the bars, away from your families, or you just end up six feet deep. Don't let nobody persuade you to get involved in something that you are not ready for. I love that, dog. And because all these things you're going to do is going to lead you in three places hospital, death, or in jail. That's it. That's what's up. Or, or if you're lucky, you know what I'm saying? You might end up crippled. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Damn, that's you ain't lucky. Like that. Also, another thing is that a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying, out here that needs to be addressed. All you niggas out here that's out here just, just like shooting up shit and hitting innocent kids, that shit needs to stop. That shit really needs mm. to stop. Like, there is no honor or no stripes in shooting kids. You guys out here doing all this bullshit, and then you put kids in the mix, and they have to pay the price with their lives because of some shit that has nothing to do with them because you guys want to do this shit while kids are playing outside or going to school. Man. You guys need to cut that shit out, and that, you niggas need to be addressed. Damn, I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, dog. Did someone else want to jump in? I heard something. Uh, shoot, man, we, you know what I'm saying? This is Avenue Trey, and I approve of this message, and I want all, everyone, to, you know, have positivity in their life, man. Just, you know, yeah. I'll stay alive, y'all. Thank you, thank you. That's what my, my show is all about right there in a nutshell. My show is not to glorify the gang life. My show is to talk with brothers like this who've been through it, who experienced the life and came out the other side. And I want to change lives out there. I want to change these little kids, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, who, who watch and listen to my podcast. Um, you know, is this a life you want? You know what I'm saying? Something you, ha you said tonight, one of you may have changed one life. And pretty much that's what my whole show is about. And if I die tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? My mission was accomplished because my number one mission is hashtag hood peace, hashtag hood peace. For us to recognize that our nations have worked together for security and peace and human dignity around the world. In Paris, the most ambitious agreement in history to fight climate change, a new sustainable development set of goals to end extreme poverty, to the American company health and education, a debate across this country tonight, for all people. a business in Wisconsin implanting microchips in its employees in the skin of their hands. So what are they tracking and would you say yes if you're supposed to do the same? Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat I had to rush out of my bed Cause I was late for work My motherfucking rent is due And my boss is a jerk Pencil pushing at the job An intermediate clerk My mama told me to go to school I'm going bananas berserk I work every day Don't know where the money goes My girl is big and pregnant Want me to paint her toes Only a high school diploma I'm smelling the aroma The greenery is burning in my room But life is a mama mamacita She glad to meet ya She bad coming soon <laughs> Better get the broom My nigga, you clean up your house She got a little more time to back out Cause she ain't your spouse But do I love her? I need her Maybe respect how I treat her But when I see my baby I'ma wanna go and feed her Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat
Just give me a little bit of peace yes. Steady job, it's a fool to eat I was born in a space and time where people were stupid Everybody looking for love, fucking with Cupid Who did whatever they wanted to do with black fist up Stand to opposition, keeping Hennessy in a cup Drink, nigga tell me what you think about God The Bible is written by man, so people think of a side Form your own opinion before you listen to white men The system has got you on American bandstand And when you get home, you gotta look in the mirror Take off all the makeup and the wig is more clear I fear a day when I can't smoke my weed I drink my drink, my nigga, you know what I need But success is a motherfucker, shoes to feel I got a baby at home, I need them big time deals This shit just got real, it's going down tonight Somebody gon' get jacked, hope they don't put up a fight Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Blow that smoke right out your lungs You go to church every Friday Now you're speaking in tongues You gave up chilling with friends Pastor got a bend Repenting on your knees Confessing all your sins to the end How far will it go? Why you naked boy? He eating all your candy Tasting your own joy Troy, I can help you Let me take you to outer space If you're looking for God Meditate to the perfect place Race, we moving at the speed of light Traveling fast through a black hole And in my days Tonight. I'm trying to fight against the norm My eyes are open, you see Cause I can only be me Not what you want me to be Classy, nigga born in the 77 Daddy named Orlando My name Kevin Lucille, my mama The girl true raised me Kevin and Delilah They having a baby Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job is some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace steady job is some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace steady job is some food to eat